Hey guys, what's up? It's Teppo here and we are back for another episode of Photo Tuesday, but before we start, let's roll that intro. First off, I want to thank all of you guys for sending your different photos this past week. It's so cool to interact with you guys and be a part of the community. Maybe next time I should be a little bit more specific because I ended up getting a lot of dog portraits. And this week we're going to be specifically talking about portraits of people. So next time I'll communicate that better so that we don't get a whole bunch of random different photos. But thank you guys so much for sending your photos in because without you guys we wouldn't be having another Photo Tuesday. Taking portraits of people is my favorite. I love capturing the motions and the uniqueness of everyone's face. And there's just something about capturing an amazing portrait of somebody. So looking at all the portraits that you sent me this week, there was three things that came to my mind that I want to talk to you guys about. The first thing I want to talk about is depth of field. When you're shooting portraits of people, you want the viewer's attention to go to the subject's face and not the background. And you can achieve this by shooting with the high apertures, blurring out the background and creating a nice depth of field and bouquet. So if I'm fairly close to the subject, I like shooting with maybe an aperture of 2 to 2.8. And if I'm a little bit farther away from the subject, I can maybe get a little bit more risky and shoot with a higher aperture like 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.8 just to get even more depth of field. But the reason why you got to be careful with this is that if you're really close to the subject and you have a really high aperture like 1.2 or 1.4, the problem that you get to is that you might have a really nice bouquet and nice depth of field, but the actual face of the subject is not all in focus. Sometimes you can have the eyes in focus, but the nose, because it's a few centimeters closer, it's going to be out of focus. So if you're close to the subject, make sure you have a little higher aperture like 2 to 2.8. But if you're a little bit farther and you want to get more depth of field, you can go a little bit riskier and shoot at maybe 1.2, 1.4, 1.8 to get more depth of field, more bouquet, but still make sure that the face is all in focus. So in order to draw the attention of the viewer to the subject and not the background, make sure you shoot with a high aperture to get nice depth of field and bouquet. But make sure it's not too high because then you might not get all the face in focus. You want all the face in focus when you're taking a portrait of somebody. The second thing I want to talk about is lighting. When you first start in your photography career, you might not be so aware, but different light changes the look and feel of a photo. And when it comes to portraits, you want really nice soft lighting because that's flattering to a person's skin and face. So in order to get that nice soft lighting, make sure you're shooting during sunrise or sunset to get that golden hour or a nice cloudy day so that the sun has a nice soft box creating that nice soft light on your face. Of course, you can shoot on a harsh light day, but you just gotta get a little bit creative on how you use the light. And this is maybe for a little bit more of a professional photographer. But when you're beginning, make sure you have this nice soft light because that's gonna get the best portraits possible. And second thing when it comes to lighting, make sure when you're shooting portraits of people that you get a nice catch light in their eye. Basically, a catch light is this little white light in the person's eye that comes from the light source. And the reason why you want that is it makes the photo just a lot more attractive, a lot more beautiful, especially with a, a girl, you know, you want to get that nice shining glowing catch light in their eye so it makes their eyes just pop out and just more beautiful. So guys, make sure that when you're shooting a portrait that you direct the subject to look in a way that you can get the catch light into their eyes because if you don't get the catch light, it's just going to be very dark in their eye and they're not going to pop out. So guys, focus on catch lights. They're super important when it comes to shooting portraits. And the third thing I want to talk about is composition. Of course you want to have nice lighting and you want the subject to look really flattering, but as well you want them to fit into the scene. Because even if you have nice lighting and the portrait of the subject looks good, but the background just doesn't fit the scene, it's not going to work. So whenever you're shooting a portrait of somebody, make sure that they fit in the scene by using the leading lines, by framing, or just by having nice symmetry in the shot, because that's going to give a nice overall look to your portrait. Whenever I'm shooting portraits of people, not only am I focusing on the lighting on their face and how they look, but as well I'm constantly scanning the background and trying to figure out how are they going to fit into the scene the best possible way in order to get the best possible portrait. So guys, let's get into this week's photos. I got five different people's photos and I give you constructive feedback on all of them. So let's get into it. All right, so this first portrait is taken by my good friend Isaac. Shout out Isaac, miss you bro. Hope you're doing well in Toronto. Uh, the things I love about this photo, it's obviously shot through a window, so you get this really nice bouquet reflections around her head, and she's really framed well in the middle of all their surroundings. I love the catch lights in her eyes, I love the expression, just the goofiness of the shot. I think the constructive feedback that I can give is that I love the edit, it's a nice vintage brown tone feel to it, 
The problem I have with it is it's very flat. There's no separation between her and the background because it's all brown. So maybe by upping the highlights and the whites in the shot, her face and skin tones would pop up more and separate from the background. But in all in all, great portrait, great work Isaac, keep on going. You're gonna be a fantastic photographer. Photo two is taken by Isaac Makarski, a different Isaac. Uh, this portrait, I really love it. There's really nice soft lighting on her face with beautiful catch lights. Really like the edit, it's very natural, good looking, skin tones are on point. He's using great use of leading lines with yellow lines of the road as well as on the sides of the road. But I think the only constructive feed that I would give is that if she was looking towards the right more, towards the light, I think it could have been a more beautiful lighting on her face. But this totally depends on what kind of style of photo you're going for. Are you going for a more moody, shadowy photo or do you want a nice bright light on her face? So this is up to you, but this is just a suggestion. Also, her head isn't perfectly in the middle of the square at the end of the road. Just a few millimeters to the left would have been perfect. As well, I would have considered removing these pylons on the left and possibly even the X on the road as my eyes keep leading towards the left side and not to her. But Isaac, fantastic portrait. Keep doing what you do. Photo number three was taken by Alex Putteren. This was another guy from Finland, so shout out to my Finnish friends. I love the framing of this shot, really nicely framed in between the leaves and the trees. I think there's great lighting on the subject's face and I love the added touch of the sunglasses. I think the only constructive feedback would be that it would've been cool if he was looking up a little bit. I think it would've created a nice reflection, catch light on the sunglasses, but out of that, I think it was a great photo. So great work, Alex, keep on going. Photo number four was taken by Jonah Steinberg. Jonah, you're killing it. You keep getting into the photo Tuesdays because you're just doing great work. I love this photo and the reason why I love it is because of the genuine emotion. Something that makes a portrait really stand out to me is the emotion portrayed in the shot and I think this is a real great documentary moment just capturing real emotion. Also you did a great job framing his head in the dark portion of the forest and nicely centered into the shot. Constructive feedback, if he was wearing a bit of a lighter beanie he would stand out even more from the dark forest as right now it's kind of like black on black. Also edit wise, I think it's a bit too purple. You can see the skin tones are going towards a more purple reddish and you can easily fix this in HSL just by bringing the reds and oranges to a more orangey tone. And I also think that the shadows are a little bit too lifted from my taste and started to get a little bit too faded. That's all the feedback I have for you, Jonah. I think you did a great job still nonetheless. Keep on going, you're an awesome photographer. Photo number five, another finished photographer. Shout out you, so. I think the things I love about this photo is the epic landscape for sure. She's perfectly positioned with mountains on both sides and her in between the cars and headlights. There's a nice backlight coming from the car lights and flares, really cool. And she's framed nicely into the middle of the car. I love that. And also even on the road, you see these leading lines that are drawing your eyes to her in the car. So great use of composition, great use of leading lines and framing. Constructive feedback for this photo was that her skin is quite dark. So I would have possibly just brushed a little bit brighter. Also positioned her head in a way that there'd be more of a catch light in her eyes or if it's not possible the natural light, maybe use a reflector just to get that nice catch light in her eye and that would really make her eyes pop out more. Because right now her eyes just look pretty dark and her skin tones as well. So try to get a little bit more light on the face and into the eyes. So in every Photo Tuesday episode, I wanna always edit one photo and this week I'm gonna be editing Alex Putton's photo, this shot of him just nicely in the light. I'm gonna use my new preset. I'm gonna use the preset base just to get a nice cinematic tone. Obviously a little bit too warm because it's always set at 6,000. So let's bring it down a little bit more. Just for this photo. Put a little bit of tint in there. And I'm gonna bring back a little bit of more orangeness into the skin and just adjust a little bit of skin tones. Everyone's skin tones a little bit different always. So it's good to, you know, adjust that a little bit. There's a little bit of highlights blown out on the forehead. Sometimes if you only want to impact a certain area, you can always use brushes. So here I'm gonna put the highlights and I'm gonna just choose his forehead. Maybe a little bit of the hand here. I'm gonna bring that down. I think it's ready already, voila. For me, I don't really like these bright green tones. So that's why with my presets, I always give them more uh, cinematic green tones, kind of this desaturated look. And uh, I really like that. Maybe a little bit too dark still, so I could just bring... Yeah, I think that's good. So that was before, that was after. 
Guys, simple as that with editing, with all the presets that I've made, it's literally just click, change maybe some of the contrast, and just go to HSL and fix the tones as well. So guys, I hope you guys liked this week's Photo Tuesday episode on portraits. I don't know if you guys heard, but I had just released my Lightroom presets. First off, I wanna thank you to all the people who have already bought the presets, appreciate the support. And for you guys who haven't yet checked out the presets, they're actually on sale right now for 30%. So they're going for $21. It's not too much for amazing presets in order to get that nice look for your photos. If you really enjoyed the photos on my Instagram feed, all the photos that I've edited on my Instagram have been made with these presets. So if you want that nice warm tones, nice earthy tones for your photos, make sure you check out the Lightroom presets. I'll link them below in the description. And as well, if you're new to the channel, welcome. So glad you're part of this community. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're up to date with the latest videos. And make sure you comment below because I love hearing your feedback. I'd love to hear from you guys and hear what would you like to see on the next episode of Photo Tuesday. All right guys, have a fantastic week and see you next week.